Welcome back, all. Thanks for joining. This week, I head south to the famous Exuma Island chain. In the process, I go through the biggest waves of my young sailing life, come to the realization that I'd made the stupidest decision possible to navigate rocks and reef, meet up with a great friend that I haven't seen for a few months, and see several hundreds of massive iguanas as I explore their habitat. So I'm Amy, a Midwestern Canton girl, and this is my boat, Maritopia. After moving to Florida in 2020, buying a $5,000 Facebook Marketplace worn out 1973 Pearson sailboat and spending two years endlessly working on her, I quit my job and have started my solo sailing adventures with the goal to truly immerse myself into as many different cultures as possible. I hope you're able to enjoy the videos as much as I do living the experiences. Today we're making a 50 mile passage between Cistern Bay and the Northern Eleutheras, where we've been for the last week or so and headed south to Allen's Cay in the northern Exuma Island chain. I'd always heard that sailors should never make real sailing plans, as it would put you in a position that neither you or the boat wants to be in. Well, today I would find out how very true that is. Tom and I were meeting up with our friend Trout, who we'd been waiting for, as he would become our third buddy boat for the cruising season. With the sea still rougher and taller from the windstorm, just getting out of the Cistern Bay Inlet was tough enough. But once out, and needing to go north, that would have put the waves directly on my starboard beam, a position I did not want to put the boat in. So I steered the boat at an angle and into the waves. Not only would this be more safe and comfortable, but it would get us further offshore and into deeper waters, where the seas likely wouldn't be as rough. The problem with this was that it would put me going directly into the wind, which meant that I would have to run the motor. Hey, I'm wearing my foul weather gear. Got the Garmin in reach on. Uh, I'm strapped in so I don't have it strapped to me. But headed to the Exumas. Phew. Video never seems to do the seas justice. It just doesn't show the sometimes overwhelming size. After having myself guessed that the waves were between 25 and 30 feet, my buddy boater, Captain Tom, who is a very experienced retired offshore captain, let me know that these waves were about 15 to 20, which still meant that they were the biggest seas I'd ever been in. For the first hour or so, the anxiety levels were high, but after finally settling into it, I got to the point of being happy that I was experiencing this. Only a month ago, six foot seas and 20 knot winds would have been a reach for me. I'm headed for the deeper water up here, then I'll turn to the west. There's no landmass there and it's deeper water, so the waves won't be crashing on the sea floor and making even bigger waves. So I've made that turn to the northwest. Uh, the seas are on our starboard rear quarter, so they're hitting in this area. So it's still uh, not as good as I thought it would would be, and we're in about 3,000 feet of water. Uh, but where it'll really get comfortable surfing these waves is when I turn southwest. When I make that left-hand turn, uh, I have slowed the engine RPMs down. I put out some of the head sail. I'm not quite ready to put it all out and shut the engine off. Uh, taking it step by step to see where I am comfortable. I know the boat can handle it, it's me. Uh, so, slow steps. But we're making good progress. Uh, right around the six knot range, the head sail's given us about three quarters of a knot. Well, finally, after five hours, I've got the engine turned off, full head sail and a reef main. The wind is right on our beam. Uh, and we're making about six knots. So, the seas have calmed down a lot because that landmass over there is helping block them. So, yeah. We're doing good. Get some free mileage out of this boat. 
Man, it's a lot nicer now that the seas aren't rough like that. I could do this all day long every single day. Okay, that's a lie. Because after the sale this morning, actually I shouldn't say sale, I should say motor sale this morning. Uh, I need a drink. this morning and those whatever they were 20 foot or so I will take these little one and a half two foot seas all day long we're just keeping on keeping on heading to the Exumas gonna meet my boy Trout uh, on his YouTube channel is sailing with Trout the guy is a uh, comedic genius just by nature. So, I'll put his link in the uh, description down below. So, you might check him out. He's hilarious. Boy, the morning sail compared to this afternoon or night and day. It's been a beautiful sail this afternoon. Uh, upper teens, low to mid 20s. Autopilot is killing it. So one of the problems that I was having with autopilot uh, on the sail to Andros, it wouldn't keep up. Uh, come to find out, there was a batch of the Raymarine uh, Evolution 100 autopilots that went out with the wrong parts. Uh, Raymarine has warranted that. Uh, they've already shipped it. Trout picked it up in Marathon. Uh, he's got it on his boat, so I'll meet him and the Exumas uh, tomorrow. But uh, uh, I was able to get this one working because I put my old motor and belt onto this one. Uh, so it's it's been keeping up perfectly fine. The winds the last few hours have been consistently over 20 uh, for probably about the last four hours. When I first left Marathon to head here, I was uncomfortable with that. Uh, now I am completely fine with it. In fact, I wish it were more like 25. That's me learning how to control the boat better, uh, just getting used to things. We're now back in shallower waters and have these coral heads to navigate through. Prior to setting sail this morning, I'd carefully planned my route. Little did I know how inaccurate the charts would be. 
So I've got the sails down for the next couple of hours. Uh, the sun is going down. It is super shallow. And all those red spots are rocks and coral. So I'm gonna motor through this. I don't wanna take any chances. So right there is what I'm going through. That darker spot is a rock or coral, one or the other, and it's just below the surface. Fortunately, they're really well marked, but they are everywhere for the next, I don't know, 15 miles. So ideally, you'd have two people at a minimum, one on the bow, telling you what way to go to avoid them, and the other one in the cockpit at the helm doing what the person on the bow says. And you wouldn't do it at night. There's another one. You can see it just under the surface. If I hit that, it would be massive problems for the boat. And they dock this whole next long way. This never gets old. The sun sets at sea are just gorgeous, magnificent, wonderful, amazing. There are not nearly enough adjectives in the English language to describe the unique beauty of each night's sunset. Little did I know that only moments later I would learn that I'd made the stupidest error in judgment of my young sailing career. Unfortunately, in a state of near panic and trying to maintain navigation of the boat, I failed to record any of it. Right at dusk, with the sun basically set, I saw a coral head that wasn't on either of the charts I used. After literally running back to the helm to navigate around it, I went back to the bow, spotlight in hand, and saw another one. Sprinting back to the helm, I avoided it as well. With it now being dark, I had no choice other than slowing the boat down and basically crossing my fingers that the rest of the path was accurately marked. If I ended up hitting one of these coral heads, it was surely game over. Well, I made it through all those rocks. It was going great until I saw two, uh, when it was still daylight, I saw two that weren't marked. Uh, so I kind of wet my pants just a little bit because it's pitch black now. Uh, and how many others are there out there that aren't marked? So, but I made it through, thank God. It wasn't the smartest thing to do to go through that in the middle of the night. Uh, but it was a high tide, which I had in my favor. And the winds are going to be horrible tomorrow. It is what it is. I made it through. I don't know that I'll take a chance like that in the future. The red course is the path I took. The far smarter decision would have been to go out to the west where there aren't nearly as many rocks. I can't blame this on the charts, as although inaccurate, they clearly state that visual navigation is necessary. I'd never been here before, and it was dark when I set the anchor last night. After a much needed night's sleep, I would wake up in the morning to a very secluded little island of Allen's Cay. Greetings out of the way, it was time for the three of us to explore this little remote island. Oh, you put the name on the back. Oh, nothing. Oh, nothing. Good look at all for our uh, iguana day. Right. <laughs> Going over to Iguana Beach. Iguana Beach. Yeah, I'm on. Oh, there's no anchor. <laughs> so let's, let's see if some of the iguanas want to come out and play. I forgot to bring carrots. I was told they really like carrots. You can hear them rummaging around everywhere. 
Come, little buddy. These suckers are huge. That's probably two, a little over two feet long. Yeah, probably, yeah. Probably pushing two and a half feet long. That's a big mammon jamma. So this one is about two feet. That other one was probably three feet. He's like, sup, girl? <laughs> I'm not sure if they live in those holes. There's these holes everywhere on the island. And I don't know if iguanas sleep underground or maybe they dig the holes but don't live there. They look like dinosaurs. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. Hey, one's <laughs> <laughs> <Tom> <laughs> 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 a crab Tom race. Oh, oh, I'm gonna win. Boom. And Amy takes it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trout's barely even moved. <laughs> Still gonna be Tom. Come on, buddy. Tom. Come on. You don't want to cross the threshold. Buddy. Come on. Tom's as intimidated intimidated by the line of sand. So close. Ah. Oh, oh. Trout's got second. <laughs> he rolled down a damn hill. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. After a very quick spearfishing session, Trout was able to catch a solid yellowtail, which Tom quickly made into a delicious dinner. It was sure nice to have the three of us together again. If you'd like to stay up to date and follow along with the adventures, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for joining. I'll see you next week when I catch and make my first concorn, finally and permanently repair the autopilot, and then head south to Farmer's K where I meet up with some good friends that I met while my boat was in the workyard.